Hello, welcome back. Some of the ideas that we're going to be talking about today are conductors versus insulators, as well as different ways of charging an object. Uh, by We've already talked about uh, charging by friction, but there's other, other ways to do that. Uh, so uh, electrons can can uh, can go easily around in some materials. Uh, they can travel quite easily, but in some materials, they're they're stuck in place, um, and and that's because the the, the electron structure of that material, uh, the valence electrons and things like that. Uh, in a conductor, the electrons can travel easily uh, from one place to another. Uh, in an insulator, the uh, the electrons are, are pretty much stuck in place. Okay. Um, electricity. So these are those high powered lines. If you look uh, at a zoomed in picture of these high powered lines, uh, high voltage transmission lines, um, you see these uh, little squiggly things. Uh, these are insulators. They're made of glass. So things like glass and rubber tend to be insulators. Uh, things like metals and uh, and uh, mostly metals. Uh, tend to be uh, conductors. Uh, in the in the wires, of course, are, are metal to conduct the uh, the electricity, um, and they're they're of course surrounded by an insulator to try to prevent the electricity from going where it's not wanted. Um, but these the, these towers are uh, are made of metal too, um, and in order to prevent the the electricity from jumping from the wires to the tower to the ground, uh, they've got these uh, these insulators here. And the, uh, the electricity will travel through hundreds of miles of wire, which is a, a conductor, before it'll travel through, you know, uh, a few centimeters of, of the, of the insulator. Um, so just to give you an idea of the difference between these. Um, so one thing that you should definitely know is that when you place charge on a conductor, okay, on, so we're talking something like metal, uh, the, uh, the, the charge migrates to the, uh, the outside of the, uh, of the object. So if we're talking about a sphere, for example, um, the, uh, the charge migrates to the outside of the sphere. Okay. And it does that to get that extra charge away from it because it's, it's, you know, the electrons are repelling electrons. Um, and so they repel each other. So they move their, themselves to the outside of the sphere. Um, now here, uh, we didn't have protons move because protons didn't move. Remember, that's a nuclear reaction. Uh, we just had some of the electrons migrate in uh, and to, to minimize, to get that, that, that extra charge as far away from possible. Okay. Uh, if you place charge on, a, on an insulator, um, it, will, it will just stay there in patches. Uh, it can't migrate around like the, uh, the electrons in the metal. So if you were to rub a balloon on your, on your head and wipe it on a, uh, on your desk, the, 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 you would, you would have like a charge, uh, patch. If you had some sort of charge viewing machine, which would be really cool, I think, um, you'd be able to see like glowing patches on your, on your desk. Okay. Um, so, um, now friction by rubbing, we talked about that. That's, that's one way in the triboelectric series. Uh, but that's not the only way that an object can be charged. Uh, one object can be charged by contacting uh, another object, uh, simply contacting, uh, if that one object is charged. So if I have a negative, a negative uh, metal sphere and I bring it into contact with a neutral uh, uh, sphere, okay, those extra electrons on the, uh, on the negative sphere want to spread out and get away from each other as much as possible. So in, in doing so, they're going to spread out to the uh, to the the other sphere, so we just charge that other sphere. Okay, this is called charging by uh, conduction. Okay, uh, also referred to as charging by contact, but charging by conduction. We conducted the the electrons from one to the other. Okay, uh, now uh, these these uh, spheres would repel each other, um, and they would you know if they were on strings they would they would you know spread out. Okay. Uh, I, I can do the same thing if I use a, uh, a conductor to, con to connect them. Uh, so copper is a good conductor. Um, and, and so that, that also is charged by conduction. Uh, if I use a piece of glass, which is an insulator, um, the electrons will not travel through that. Um, so no conduction. Um, so how would a neutral object become positively charged by conduction? Okay, so um, 
So here we've got a positively charged object, uh, and here we've got a neutrally charged object. Okay, what would what's going to happen when I touch these? Here I've got a positively charged object, and here I've got a, a negatively charged object. Well, hint, they're both going to end up positively charged. How is this one going to end up positively charged? Okay, well, it's going to end up positively charged because you know some of the electrons on the on the neutral one are going to flow over. Uh, to spread out that extra charge, um, and and so uh, now we're going to end up with two positively charged objects. Okay. Now, if I bring a negatively charged object or, or just a charged object in general uh, near but not touching a neutron, so we're going to use the example of a negatively charged object, um, and this is a different ver a different form of charging. Uh, I bring it near but do not touch. I'm going to cause the electrons on the uh, on the one side to repel to the other side. Okay, so now now I have a positively a charged half of the object and a negatively charged half of the object. Okay, so we've got a positive side and a negative side. Okay, now this movement of charge without contact is called induction. Okay, similar to deduction induction. Uh, that kind of thing, but just a different use for that, that, that word. Okay, now, this object to the right, remember polar, nonpolar, uh, ions? Okay, so polar means it's got a positive side and a negative side. So, um, a lot of chemistry in this one. So here we've got a, uh, a, a polar, uh, neutral sphere. Okay. Okay, now, if I move this thing back, okay, everything will go back to normal, no harm, no foul. Uh, nothing, nothing that happened. Uh, okay. Uh, but what's interesting is when, when they are near each other, okay, I've got a, a positive side and a negative side. They actually will attract each other. So a negatively charged object or a positively charged object for that matter will attract a neutral object. Okay. Even though it doesn't have a net charge, there will still be an attraction between them. And this is very demonstrable. Uh, demonstrable, I don't know, one of those. Um, and why would the, the force of the attraction be stronger than the force of repulsion? Because we've got a positive side that's attracting. We've got a negative side that's repelling. Okay, why, why would the attraction be stronger? Well, because it's closer to the sphere. Uh, so therefore that's gonna, these attractions are gonna repel, we're gonna outweigh, sorry, uh, the repulsions. Okay, distance. Uh, here's an example of neutral objects being attracted to uh, a charged object. So here's here's water, um, the stream of water. You can see it being bent uh, due to the, the charged comb. Um, okay. Um, so here's a video clip I wanted you to watch. Uh, now that it's winter time and we're thinking about charging objects and, and things like that, um, be, be ca careful if you get back into your car when you, um, when you, uh, pump your gas, so you get your gas pumping, you go back into your car. What happens when you, when you slide into your seat? Okay. You can have, uh, charging by friction. Okay. And then, uh, what's going to happen when you go to go, uh, touch the, uh, metal, um, gas pump handle? Uh, something could happen. So, um, uh, if you do get back into your car, when you uh, pump your gas, touch something metal before you uh, touch the gas pump. Um, you know, make sure it's metal, uh, not concrete. Do to do, just get my gas. Gonna enter my zip code. There she is getting into a car. So she might have cotton, uh, or who knows what she has, um, and rubbing against that, um, that, uh, car seat, which is probably nylon or something. I don't really know what it is. Any number of plastics. Now she's charged. And there it goes. <laughs> I 
Maybe that's not funny. Um, it's I guess it can be since somebody got hurt. Um, so uh, be care, be conscious of that. Um, that kind of thing. So this would normally when I, when I would do a demonstration where I take a, a neutral um, um, soda can and uh, and I charge a rubber balloon and I bring the rubber balloon next to this neutral soda can and uh, and it'll it'll attract. Um, the thing because of this induction that we've been talking about, this polar uh, positive and negative side. Again, they haven't touched. Um, all that all we've done is induced a polar uh, object. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so um, now after the right now they they're attracted to each other. Okay, after they touch. Will they be attracted to each other, not attracted to each other, or repel? Okay. Well, what's going to happen is the negative uh, electrons, the extra and negative electrons, are going to spread out over to this this uh, this polar uh, neutral one, making it negative. So now they're both negative, so they're both going to repel. Okay. So this is called charging by induction and separation. So what I've got is two spheres. They're they're made out of metal so that we can conduct. Uh, and uh, we're going to bring a negatively charged object near. Okay. So and what's going to happen is we're going to repel the electrons, not all of them. Okay. Uh, for for simplicity, I didn't I didn't show all, you know, trillion billion million trillion electrons. Um, so. Uh, uh, and what we see is we end up with a positively charged uh, uh, sphere and a negatively charged sphere. Okay, now together they're neutral. Overall, they're neutral. But because they're they're different objects, we can say that one's positive and one's negative. Okay, if I if I bring this this thing back, okay, again without touching, okay, they they go back to normal. Okay, uh, but if I separate them, if I separate them. Before I take this thing away, okay, now these charges can't get back, and I ended up with a positively charged sphere and a negatively charged sphere. Okay, so this is called charging by induction and separation. Okay, uh, once I have a charged object, I can, and let's say I want to make it neutral, what I, what I can do is touch it to a ground. Okay, the Earth is neutral, okay, and really big. Okay. So it acts like a, a big charged reservoir. Okay. If you bring a charged object, so here I've got a negatively charged object, and it touches a conductor or a ground wire, or sometimes just called a ground, okay, uh, what's going to happen is those electrons are going to try to spread out as much as possible, and they're basically going to all end up in the uh, all the extra ones uh, in the uh, in the neutral earth. Okay, the earth is really big, so these electrons can spread out. Uh, and and it's it's no big deal, okay. Now if I have a positively charged, uh, so we, that was just uh, grounded as we said. So when when we say something's been grounded, we say it's been uh, it's been neutral neutralized, okay. Uh, so if I bring a positively charged object to the to the ground, okay, uh, I'll have some extra electrons flow up to that object, okay, and and the the Earth is still pretty much neutral. Okay, we taking a couple of electrons from the Earth isn't going to change its its charge very much. So now we say that they're both neutral. And then the same with the previous example, the the Earth was still neutral. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, very very commonly, uh, um, you'll see a symbol for this in electrical schematic. Uh, this represents a ground. If I want to show that something is neutral, um, then I use the uh, this ground symbol. Uh, and it'll it'll do that. Uh, how a ground uh, you all well depending on how old your house is, but if you've got three prongs in your in your outlets, uh, you should have a ground wire. Uh, and a ground wire is basically a wire that's connected to your copper pipe, and the copper pipe goes into the ground. Okay, um, and this is what they use to typically screw the uh, the the wire onto. So, uh, and that is. That's there so that if you have some extra charge buildup, um, that it goes to the ground uh, instead of you, you know, getting zapped. It goes to the neutral ground and probably trips a breaker or whatever. Okay, so here we've got charging by induction and grounding. 
All right, so again, pay attention. I know this can be all a little confusing, but just uh, do your best. You may have to watch parts of this video more than once. Um, so here we've got a negative object, and we've got a, a, a neutral uh, can of some sort. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my, ne my, my negative object. What's going to happen when I bring my negative object near but not touching? Well, the electrons are going to move from one side to the other. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the uh, the opposite side of the soda can, okay, um, with with my hand, which is going to ground it. I mean, it wouldn't ground a lot of charge, but it'll it'll work for this case. Okay, picture if you want to picture a ground wire, go go for it. Um, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my hand, and then remove the uh, the uh, um, the negatively charged object charged object. And look at the charge on the sphere. Okay, why did it end up negatively charged? Well, okay, it ended up negatively charged because I, I induced polarity. Then I had a negative side. Okay, and this negative side wants to uh, become neutral. So I, when I grounded it, and I lost some electrons. Okay, and then when I pulled them both away, I end up with a positively charged can. Okay, so that's in charging by induction and grounding. Okay, now if I used a positively charged rod, okay, I, I, uh, I'd have the negative electrons be attracted on the left side, okay, and I'd end up with a, a positively charged side on the opposite side. So the key thing here is I'm touching on the opposite side uh, the, of the charged object. Okay, um, so now I'll move my neutral hand to the can, and because this is positive and my hand is neutral, okay, um, we're going to get some uh, negative electrons that flow into the can from my hand. Okay, and now when I remove everything, everything's going to have that that negative charge. Okay, so here's an example, uh, just showing the same thing. So induced polarity. Here's he's grounded. There's the ground symbol. So, kind of, I guess, the thing uh, to think about is that you end up with the opposite charge of which you started when you do this. Okay, so there's some more things that I would do. Um, let's see. So, I want to talk a little bit about a device called an electroscope. An uh, electroscope is a device that's used to detect charge. Uh, so, if you bring a charged object near this, this metal rod uh, and ball, um, what happens is these this uh, foil, this is thin strips of foil, uh, separate uh, as the uh, as the charge is brought near and, and the the force gets stronger and stronger. Uh, it's housed in a, gra uh, in a glass flask, uh, and then this metal uh, ball goes through a, a rubber stopper. Okay, and how they work is like this. So uh, it's going to start out neutral. So gravity's pulling these leaves down. Uh, everything is neutral, uh, so nothing is out of the ordinary. Now, when if I bring a negatively charged object near it, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repel the, the the electrons. I'm not touching it. I'm just bringing it near it. I'm going to repel the the electrons down to the bottom of the of the uh, metal uh, rod where the gold foil is. Okay. Now this gold foil is you know very very. Uh, Limp, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. So it can bend and, and separate and, and separate out because of the the fact that they're both negative. Okay, um, so that's that's really the simple devices and that's how they work. If you take the rod away, all the electrons go back to normal. The leaves uh, fall back down and and um, everything is normal. Uh, if you if you touch it, Okay, you'll end up negatively charging everything permanently, all well, as permanent as things are. Uh, and when you remove your your uh, uh, rubber rod, um, then the leaves will stay uh, will stay put. And in order to get it neutral again, you'll have to ground it. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, now, if you bring a positively charged rod, okay. Uh, you could you could temporarily reduce those effects by attracting some electrons up, uh, and the leaves would fall back down again, okay, reducing their repulsion. Okay, uh, some applications of this. 
Um, there's powder painting. Uh, what they do is they, instead of spray painting something with a liquid, uh, they put a negative charge uh, on the metal parts that they want to uh, that they want to coat, and they spray a uh, a fine powder of solid paint, uh, almost like a plastic, uh, and that plastic sticks to the metal, and um, and uh, and then they they bake it on. Um, photocopiers work on on uh, on electrostatics. Uh, they use some light sensitive uh, material that that um, they're, whether or not they'll hold a static charge depends on if they've been exposed to light and uh, they'll they'll use static electricity to pick up the the toner powder and then uh, lay that on uh, with uh, uh, the uh, uh, by contacting it and then they'll use heat to fuse it um, they, uh, they they use what are called electrostatic precipitators at uh, coal-fired power plants uh, so coal typically puts out quite a bit of smoke uh, and there's limits on how much uh, pollution that they can put out so one way they can do to capture that is by uh, charging some metal plates in the smokestacks and the, the smoke particles will stick to it and then after so long they'll, they'll beat the uh, uh, these metal plates and the, and the particulates the smoke will fall into some hoppers and gets uh, gets gets clean so the wrappers um, so okay I think that's it for uh, today thank you for listening and uh, let me know if you have any questions